throne and he shall reign forevermore evermore and he shall reign forevermore evermore and unto us a child is born the king of kings and the lord of lords and he shall reign forevermore evermore instrumental Just about morning, 5 to 12. Morning if you're catching us on YouTube as well. Very warm welcome. Um, this is our third service. If you haven't been before, it's a, it's a time to make space um, to worship through singing, um, through God's word, and just to um, make space to receive from God too. So... Um, I love, I love the fact we're getting even more charismatic. We start a bit late and we have a nice soft start. And the band just start playing, you know. It's good stuff. So a very warm welcome to everyone. Let's just welcome him in our midst. And remember that when we gather, the Lord Jesus comes and meets with us. Come, Holy Spirit. Move amongst us. Speak to us today. And for those who were in the previous service, it was wonderfully busy. frantic at times may this be a place of calm and peace
Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Now we did, we read in the words this morning and a number of possible words as well. So it's a picture of a spinning top which eventually fell over and stayed still. And maybe God is saying, some of you are like the spinning top, so busy and energetic that you have no time to listen to me, your Heavenly Father. Take time out to listen to me for your healing and stability and strength. Too many of my children come to me exhausted instead of rejuvenated by being my servant. So consider your ways and allow the love of my son to permeate you, my children, at this Christmas time. And three specific, that probably applies to each and every one of us, um, but three specific ones. Someone has got extreme pains in both feet, a problem with kidneys, and another whose mind feels as though it is being battered. If any of those apply to you, we love to pray for and with you um, through the service. Over to the band.
and elsewhere. Better is one day in your court, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your court, and thousands elsewhere. My heart and flesh cry out for you, the living God, your water, it's water. I've tasted and I've seen, come once again to me, I will draw near to you, I will draw near to you. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts.
Holy Spirit, you are so welcome here. Amen. Well, um, as of about, I don't know, 9.30 yesterday evening, it was going to be, let's just have a time of silence and waiting on the Lord, and whoever comes up with the passage, we'll talk about that one. Uh, (laughs) It's getting worse. But uh, I then went to the dad's taxi, and I was listening to, as it happened, uh, Hamilton, you know, the musical, um, in the car. And there's a song there called My Shot, which you may be aware of. And there was a line which was sung, which was, I'm just like my country, I'm young, scrappy, and hungry. And it's Alexander Hamilton singing about himself um, in the in the pre-American Republic, and this whole idea about being young, ha- uh, young, scrappy, and hungry. Now, some of us may no, no longer be young, um, but I quite like the idea of being scrappy and hungry. And so it got led me to thinking about that word hungry and that question what are you hungry for and that then led me to um, the Beatitudes which if you have a Bible in front of you you'll find on page 968 Matthew 5 968 now I'm sure you know them very well um, Blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek. But then we have verse 6, Matthew 5, verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what? For righteousness. So that word hunger, being scrappy and hungry, what are we scrappy and hungry for in the kingdom? Well, the blessed attitude is those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, being right with God. And it tells us that those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. Now, we could think filled, well, filled with the Holy Spirit. And undoubtedly that's true, because we're told that we are to continuously ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we also know that we can only do God's will through the power of the Holy Spirit. But actually, and that is true, but the Greek word which is translated there as filled means to be completely satisfied. It means um, to your desire to be completely met. And in the context of the whole verse, that means when we hunger and thirst for being right with God, God will make us right with him. Does that make sense? And so in the light of verse 6, 7, 8, and 9, and 10, take on a slightly different perspective. Because if we're thirsting and hungering and being scrappy for the righteousness, that means we're right with God. Well, what is that? Well, Blessed are the merciful. So being right with God means being filled with mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. Being right with God means being pure in heart. And blessed are the peacemakers. Being right with God means somebody who seeks for peace. And we've got this idea about being holy, haven't we? Holy people. Uh, and in 1 Peter 15, uh, 1 Peter 1, 15, it says, be holy as he is holy. Now, holy means to be set apart by God. It means being different to the world. And we tend to think about holy people as being people who do the right things. But actually, 
we're set apart by God, that doesn't mean that we're necessarily righteous. We've got to join in. And we sometimes use the two almost interchangeably. You know, you're holy and righteous. Well, just because God has set us apart doesn't mean that we're automatically right with him because we can rebel. Does that make sense? So we want to be both holy and righteous, not just claim holiness. And so going back to these three other blessed attitudes that we find, being merciful, pure in heart, and being peacemakers, took me to Micah 6, 8. What does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love, do you know what the word is? Mercy. Mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. What does the Lord require of you? To seek justice, mercy, and humility. And then Amos 5.24 says this, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an overflowing stream. It is God's desire for us that we should be both holy, as he is holy, and righteous. And we can't depend on the holiness bit. We have to join in. One of the songs we sang earlier this morning, there's a line in it, it's Hosanna. There's this line, break my heart for what breaks yours. What does the Lord require? Justice and mercy and humility. What about the peace? Well, one of the um, uh, passages that we'll hear many times over the next week, I'm sure, is Isaiah 9-6, which describes the coming son which is given as a wonderful counsellor, but also a prince of peace. So that lands us on James 5. Um, And there's a couple of aspects I'd like to look at there. We'll find out on page 1216. Book of James, chapter 5, starting at verse 13. Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. Not might, will. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Not might, will. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a, what type of man? A righteous man, someone who is right with God, is both powerful and effective. So we're called to holiness in as far as we're set apart by God, for God but we're also called to righteousness, which is to live out that life that he sets before us. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. The prayer of a righteous man is both powerful and effective. And here's an example. My brothers, and this is how he closes the letter. My brothers, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring him back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of his ways will save him from death and cover over a multitude of sins. And so there we have that aspect of being righteous. It isn't just 
doing justice and loving mercy. It is, and, and being humble, it is seeking the truth of the gospel which comes from Jesus Christ, our Lord. And where people wander from that gospel, we are righteous when we bring them back, as are they. And when we come before the Lord with sins, and we repent of those sins, what happens? In absolutely every time, those who truly repent will receive forgiveness. Sometimes we make this more complicated than it needs to be. God's told us that he's holy. He's shown us that he's holy. He's shown us that he loves justice, mercy, and humility. And he calls us to those things. He gives us a Holy Spirit to do those things. All we need to do is join him. Should we have a time of praying and waiting and pondering these things. What is it that we're called to as individuals in that concept of even recognising that we're holy, we're called by God, we're set apart by God. We're, we're drawn to be different to the world which is separated from them. But just because we bear the name or just because we say a word, it doesn't mean that we are right with him. Because he needs us to turn to him in repentance and to listen to his call and do what he asks us to do. Easy to say, not necessarily as easy to do. But as I say, it is relatively straightforward. So we pray, come Holy Spirit. Maybe some people today need to be reminded that a life of faith means being holy, being set aside by God for God. And we all will have an area of our lives. I was about to say some here may. All of us will have some aspect of our lives where we struggle to be right with God. And we pray, come Holy Spirit, speak into those areas of our lives. There may be an aspect of the world in which we, we have had a heart burning for mercy and for justice. And it's just dampened down. And we can pray, come Lord Jesus, fire me up again. Give me the courage and give me the the voice to speak into this thing which I know is not right and you know is not right. It may be that you're suffering an injustice yourself. And you need some healing from the frustration that that brings. Come, Holy Spirit. Come minister to your people today. It may be that you're struggling with something that you need to confess and repent of. prayer there is, Holy Spirit, convict me of this sin. 
take it away from me. For those who truly repent, receive the forgiveness bought by our Saviour on the cross. I might invite the band back up and we could continue in a, an attitude of worship but also of receiving and as ever if anybody would like somebody to pray with them we'll be at the back if anybody hears a word no matter what it might be something a bit abstract a bit strange but if you offer it to us, then we can discern whether to offer it. And it's amazing how just the odd word or picture or line of a song or a poem or something doesn't mean anything to us, but means an awful lot to somebody else. Come, Lord Jesus. Move among us today. Amen.
just take a moment too, just to go back to that picture we had earlier. And just Frank, if you wouldn't mind, just keep playing. And just actively rest. Don't do anything else. I'm going to step out of the whole Christmas thing. Whatever's on your thing to do list. And just rest. It's got a picture for somebody, it might be for all of us, of a, it's like the Lord's hand, it is a human hand that's just cupped underneath. And it's just an invitation to rest back into that hand. And it's almost like that is the softest sofa you've ever laid on. just saying rest in me to receive it, you have to let let it in. say that <clears throat> what the Lord does in here is <clears throat> a bit like a microwave. Um, you know what they say about a microwave is that the way it, it actually cooks food is the process continues. That's why you have to let it rest when you take it out of the, out of the machine. It's, it continues. The, the energy that's been put into the, the, the particles or, or whatever in the food continues to move around. And so it's the same that whatever the Lord gives you here will continue as you go out there. <clears throat> so if that was for you and that rest is what you need at the moment, just take a few moments just to go into that attitude again. You don't need Frank playing in the background. We could record him and send it around, but um, he just invites you into that place just to rest so that you can receive the strength for whatever it is that you need to move into. So that brings us to an end this morning. Just close with a closing blessing. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace and rest to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
forgot to help me. He listened and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair. And the box muddy youth. He set my feet upon a hard firm pathway. He steadied me as I walked along. He put a new song. A song of praise to God. Many will look in all and put their trust in Adonai. Yes, put their trust in Adonai. Great and glorious are you. 